where do I start? Is this thing on? Celestial navigators use a device called a sextant to determine the angle between a known star and the horizon. By using the angle, plus the time it was measured, you can calculate your position. With this sextant, one of the mirrors, mirror A in the diagram, is half silvered, which allows some light to pass through it. In navigating, you look at the horizon through this mirror. The other mirror, mirror B in the diagram, is attached to a movable arm. Light from an object, let's say the sun, reflects off this mirror. The arm can be moved to a position where the sun's reflection off the mirror also reflects off mirror A through the eyepiece. What you see when this happens is the object superimposed on the other object, the horizon. The angle between the two objects is read off the scale. The next tool for air navigation was the compass. The compass was invented in China sometime between 200 BC and 100 AD, but was not used in flight until 1909. Pitch limits and magnetic dip caused reliability problems, but in straight and level flight, the compass is still one of the most reliable means of telling which way is north. The bar magnet is aligned with the respective magnetic line generated by the Earth's field. As the aircraft changes its direction, the compass card appears to move. This motion is due to the aircraft's change in direction and should not be interpreted as movement in the magnetic compass. The bar magnet of a free airplane compass remains aligned at all times with the Earth's magnetic field. The aircraft rotates around this stable, pivoted bar magnet, giving the illusion of an apparent rotation of a bar magnet. It, this movement is read on the compass card and refers to the lubber line. Magnetic heading is attained and used for navigational purpose. A few years after, a low-frequency radio transmitter was developed. The non-directional beacon is a ground-based instrument that determines the direction to the NBA, NDB relative to the aircraft. The NDB transmits an omnidirectional signal that is received by an ADF, or Automatic Direction Finder, a standard instrument up on aircraft. The pilot uses the ADF to determine the direction to the NDB relative to the aircraft. To navigate using an ADF, the pilot enters the frequency of the NDB and the compass card, or arrow, on the ADF will indicate the heading of, to the station. The signal is transmitted on an uninterrupted 24-7 basis. An audible Morse code call sign of one or more letters or numbers is used to identify the NDB being received. NDBs are highly reliable typically provided decades of uninterrupted service and are extremely low cost to install and operate. Because of this, NDBs are most widely used nav aid in the world. Only 10 years after the development of the NDB, DECA, originally developed for ships, was migrated for use by helicopters and other aircraft. DECA systems use a chain of three or four radio transmitters that achieve a range of 400 nanometers during the day and 250 nanometers at night. In 1945, use of the system was extended to aircraft, which was DECA's own chosen application. With their reliability and range, DECA systems will not be commissioned until 2001. Around the same time, VORs, also known as Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range Systems, became the most common radio navigation system in the U.S. VORs quickly took popularity over NDBs with their distinct advantages, 360 cores to and from the station great accuracy and less interference. It still serves as a useful navigation aid for many pilots without GPS services. A VOR system is made up of a ground component and an aircraft receiver component. The VR, VOR ground stations are located both on and off airports to provide guidance information to pilots both in route and during arrival and departure. The VRO system is widely used and pilots can see, still use the ORs to navigate throughout the country. The VOR ground station is aligned with magnetic north and emanates two signals, 360 degree sweep variable signal and an omnidirectional reference signal. The signals are compared by the aircraft's receiver and a phase difference between them is measured, giving a precise radial position of the aircraft, displaying it on the OBI, HSI, or RMI. Near the 1960s, INS, or Internal Navigation System, began to use a series of accelerometers and gyroscopes to determine the position. They soon became used widespread in both civil and military aircraft worldwide. With the always advancing technology, the Warren C was developed and became greatly popular in the 1970s. It used a network of land-based radio beacons to create a long-range and highly accurate navigation system, but its fate was sealed by the GPS as well. While Warren C is still operated, many stations around the world have been shut down or are in the process of being decommissioned.
I think it would be a good backup to satellite-based navigation, as foreign signals are strong, difficult to jam, and can be received 24-7, 365 days a year. Finally, we come to the small satellite-based navigation that is found in almost all devices around the world today. The GPS drove all other forms of navigation to extinction. The first satellite was launched in 1989, and the 24th was launched in 1994, making it tr a truly global system. Now GPS consists of 30 satellites orbiting the Earth at an altitude of 20,000 kilometers. The system was originally developed by the U.S. government for military navigation, but now anyone with a GPS device, be it a sat-nav, mobile phone, or handheld GPS unit can receive the radio signals that the satellites broadcast. Wherever you are on the planet, at least four GPS satellites are visible at any time, each one transmitting information about its position and the current time at regular intervals. These signals travel at, a speed, at the speed of light and are intercepted by your GPS receiver, which calculates how far each satellite is based on how long it took the message to arrive. Once it has the information on how far away at least three of the satellites are, your GPS receiver can pinpoint your location using a process called trilateralization. In the end, We've come a long way in air navigation.